Meet Jessica and Mark from the Angular team. They have this fantastic application, but something strange keeps happening. Whenever they load the application, there's a strange flicker. What can they do? Ah, I know. They should take advantage of Angular's new hydration system. No, Mark, not that type of hydration. You should enable hydration by adding a single line to your application's configuration. Great work, Angular team. Now that's what I call being flicker free. All right, all right, all right. First off, before we do anything, we got to give a huge shout out to the crew who made all of this work under pressure. Can we just give them a round of applause? All right. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a very needy speaker. I need stuff from you. So if you are able to, let's rub those hands together for me. I want to hear the sound like you didn't use lotion this morning. And, and on the count of three, we're going to do a thunder clap. That's a single clap all together. One, two, three. Let's go. I'm Mark. This is Jessica. Hello. And we're from the Angular team. And we're so thrilled to be here. And we're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to the hearts of many developers. Hydration. So, Jessica, what is hydration? Well, that's, that's an excellent question, Mark. Hydration is, well, uh, a process that restores the blah, 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 blah. That's a lot of words to say that this is a very complicated process. If you want more info about the hydration definition, please go look at the guide. But the TLDR is that it's complex and it's a bit more than just reusing your DOM. So with that, Mark, can you tell me how, and the rest of us, how server-side rendering worked before V16? Oh, can I? <laughs> All right, so here's how it used to work. So before we even talk about the past, let's talk about you, the developer community. So when we do our developer surveys, we ask lots of questions. And we ask you, what did you want? You said you want video games, coffee, cat photos. But more than that, you want hydration to be good. Like, you want it to work. So Here's how it works, right? This is what we deliver to you folks. And we loosely call this destructive hydration, but it's really this process that, you know, it didn't do exactly what you wanted to, but you all were so gracious and you supported us and we appreciate you because here's what happened. Your server, their request would come into your server. Then the, what would happen? The server would render the HTML for you. Everything's going pretty great, right? Everybody feeling good so far? Yeah. And then we send that HTML to the client. So far, so good. Then the magic would happen, and the DOM will be rendered, and then Angular will get involved, and then destroy the DOM, and then we'd re-render it during that bootstrap process, which, which caused that whole thing about the flicker in your applications. And lots of you did lots of creative work to try to work around that. So you got a little bit of the transfer state caching magic, but you didn't get much more. But now things have changed. Jessica, tell the people how things have changed. All right, well, I got some great news for you. Everybody get really excited. This is really big and not a surprise at all. <laughs> Angular's gonna reuse your DOM now. All right, Woo! yeah, we did it, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, yeah, all right. So yeah, I told you it was more than just uh, reusing your DOM. So we're gonna be talking about four different parts here. There's public API, the annotations, the transfer state, and the HTTP cache. And yeah, Mark, why don't you tell them about the public API? Yeah, so this API, 
It's going to be a part of your story because it's a one-line change. If you already have your applications using server-side rendering, this works out of the box. Now, I can hear some of you saying, but what, what about, you know, it's a standalone example. What about my modules? We, this is the same thing for your modules as well. Just add this to your providers, and then you get to use all of this great new hydration work. But there are more steps. What else? After we get here, what happens next, Jessica? All right, so we had this whole thing that you saw earlier with the little arrows. So we're going to start with that again. So like before, your request still goes out to your server, because, you know, that's how the web works. And then uh, rather than just rendering your step, we start with this annotation step. And what's happening during this annotation step is Angular is looking really closely at your component structure now. So it's looking at things like whether you're using an NGF or an NG4, whether you have content projection, things like that. It's also looking at root nodes. And, and all of that information gets bundled up into this little annotation. And that annotation is thrown into the transfer state to be reused later. And when it's doing that, uh, that bundling up, right after that, we get this next step. Serialization, Jessica. Angular, part of this complete breakfast now with less destruction. <laughs> So yeah, I think maybe, maybe they were expecting this kind of serialization. Yes, this kind of serialization. So uh, as I mentioned, we have these annotations, and then we serialize them, and we throw them into the transfer state before that HTML is then rendered or handed off to the client before the client can actually render it. Then we actually get to the browser when the browser sees this HTML from the server, and it does what it did before. It renders out the HTML. And then Angular does its work, it fetches and it bootstraps, and when it does, it sees that you enabled hydration, and it does this next thing where it looks at all those annotations in the transfer state and uses it to attach the DOM to your, ang to your Angular applica application instead of destroying it and re-rendering it, and you get this nice, well-hydrated browser. All right, so just to make sure we're all on the same page. First, there's the annotation phase. Then there's the serialization phase. And then the hydration phase. All right, fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the transfer state. Mark, did you know I recently transferred states? I moved from California to Massachusetts. Mm. Mm -hmm. This really ill annoys him. The pain. <laughs> so if you've used Angular Universal before, you actually may have utilized the transfer state before. It's a built-in service that transfers state. Surprise! And it, does, it, it transfers state from server to client. And it does this by letting you pass data into it, which, like I mentioned earlier, it gets converted into a string and then shoved into the footer of your HTML. And then on the client, that that data is actually read back into the transfer state and made available to your app. And the most common use case of this service is reusing data from HTTP client calls that were made on the server so that it doesn't make the same data fetch request again. If you actually were to view your page source with hydration enabled and you were to search for this weird string, you'll actually find the hydration annotation data in the transfer state data that's in the footer. It's where all of those annotations live. And just to be clear, there is absolutely zero reason for you to do this. It's just there if you're, cur if you're curious and you want to look, you'll find this data there. You'll also see this additional ngh equals and then a number that's attached to your components. And this is actually an index that ref references that data that's in the transfer state. We do this magic deduplication. So if you're doing uh, something like an NG4, we don't serialize the same data over and over and over again. There's only one annotation for that. So we're very careful about how much annotation data that we are actually sending to the client so we're not sending too much. So the, you don't really also need to know that this, uh, like this attribute is there. It's been there doing the hydration magic for you all along.
Well, actually, no, it wasn't. But it's there now doing that hydration magic for you. And now this is my favorite feature. It's the HTTP cash transfer. It's where Angular transfers cash directly into your bank account. It, it's <laughs> wonderful, right? Yes, we do this for you. OK, Jessica. So one of the best things about working with Jessica is that this is our everyday work life together. <laughs> like, lots of puns all the time. And it really does make working together fun. But not that type of cash, Jessica. We're talking about type of cash. Because remember, the transfer state is essential. But we now have uh, the built-in HTTP cash transfer included. So your HTTP client calls are cached. And that cash is transferred from the server to the client. Still a pretty cool cache. So we built this to be incrementally enableable. And you're probably wondering, well, why is that necessary? I shouldn't need to incrementally enable uh, hydration, right? Well, in truth, server-side rendering up to this point has been very permissive. And the reason for this is we've actually had a DOM emulation layer that is included with Universal, which means up to this point, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted on the server, and it would just work. So if you decided to, say, generate a new div, detach it, insert it somewhere else, no problem. That DOM emulation layer would mean it would just work. And that's using native APIs that the, like, just um, uh, document.create element and, and so forth. So if you do that, um, you're probably going to run into problems if you have hydration enabled, because now, uh, hydration actually requires that Angular knows everything about that component, it needs to understand that DOM structure, and that's because you need to actually be using Angular native APIs to make those changes. So if you're using native DOM manipulation in your component, hydration won't know about those in the annotations, and it's going to break the hydration process when it tries to hydrate your, your application. So you should consider these situations actual bugs, breaking bugs that need to be fixed in your component if you want to use hydration. But there is some good news. Yeah, the good news is, as the Angular team, we care about you, we care about your apps. So because that you may need to move your app over bit by bit, there's ng skip hydration. So this attribute, you can add to a component, and then that po component will not be a part of the hydration process. OK, but remember, this lets you opt the entire component out of the hydration process. So you got to be very careful. Because so this is how it works on your application. You just add it as an attribute. But if you were to add this, let's say, at your root attribute, that would be the same thing as not having hydration enabled. So kind of don't do that. Kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> So you can also use these two separate functions inside uh, provide client hydration. So if you want to disable the entire DOM reuse functionality within the client hydration, um, you can do that with, with no DOM reuse. Or if you have some sort of issue with that uh, HTTP transfer cache functionality, you can actually also just disable that with, with no HTTP transfer cache. So you have those two choices to also incrementally enable hydration with your app and figure out what's, what's going wrong as you're trying to, to get it enabled for you. For the most part, though, people have been able to enable hydration with no issues at all. So that's great. So let's take a look at a visual representation of the current state of an application. This is a very simple application with two columns, a, a nav, main content, a header, and a footer. If you have hydration enabled, it's actually going to hydrate in this order. So it'll start at the top with the header and the shopping cart. It'll move down to the nav, then to the main content, four, five, and six, and then to the footer. And you may be wondering, well, Jessica, I have lazy loaded routes in my application. Is hydration going to work with that? And yes, it will work. <laughs> no, it will work. It will work. Yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. I'm very sure that the work that we've completed means that lazy loaded routes will work. OK. All right, so here's how the, this is what the order would be for hydration instead. So we still have our header, our shopping cart, our nav, and then our footer. So all those, those blue boxes will be hydrated normally. But since the product, the details, and the add to cart are all lazy loaded, they'll be hydrated as soon as they're finished loading. Now with all of this, guess what you don't have to do anymore? 
You don't have to set your initial navigation to enabled blocking anymore. Hydration is going to ensure that all of this is taken care of for you. Didn't I tell you we care about you and your apps? I was just serious about that. We think about you folks. So, yes, yeah, so you can clap for care. That's fine. All right, but as we worked on this stuff on the team, we had some excellent help from the community, right? So I do want to give a huge shout out to some of the GDEs that supported this effort in testing. Big shout out to people like Jeff Welpley, Jay Bell, Sandra Elias, like those folks and other GDEs were able to test this with us. And then we also worked with some enterprise partners as well to test this out. So companies like ShopStyle and Mustang Bill, like these folks worked with us and we were able to just get so much information. Here's a piece of information that I think you'll find to be really interesting. Enabling hydration and some after we ran some tests, this is a number that we found. So for your LCP, your largest contentful paint, we saw an improvement of up to 45%. Now that's real improvement. And even if your number doesn't hit exactly 45%, these are the types of improvements that we did see. So there's lots of value and lots of speed coming along with the new hydration work. Now, Jessica, we've gotten everybody so excited about the work that we've done already, but tell the people what's next. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. And before we get to that, I do want to make one call out. So let's talk a little bit about what developer preview means. I think there's been a little bit of confusion about this. So let's, let's just talk about that. The developer preview means that a feature is fully functional and polished. It, allows, it, just, it essentially just allows us the flexibility of not having to go through that full deprecation cycle if we need to make a breaking change to the API. So it is definitely closer to stable. It is definitely not the equivalent of beta. Think of it as pre-stable more than anything else. There are actually already applications that are using hydration in production right now with really great results. So keep that in mind. And it's worth noting that we're actually just getting started. The architecture that we put in place for hydration is a really solid foundation to build on, and it will enable more granular hydration down the road. So. <laughs> so what's coming next? Um, well, there's that deferred loading RFC that we posted yesterday unexpectedly during the, uh, the <laughs> keynote. Um, and that's a huge stepping stone to enabling things like partial hydration and a lot more. There's also, uh, we know that there are people who want to be able to enable hydration and have interna internationalization support. We've already heard that feedback, so that's also coming. And then additionally, there's been a need already that surfaced for having the ability to uh, hook into the post-hydration uh, cleanup cycle so that you know when it's safe to start using direct DOM manipulation again. And we're actually working with Chrome Aurora on this effort in order to work towards the, uh, another goal of potentially ending DOM emulation on the server. And that's awesome. And Signals is actually going to play a big part in all of this. So we're really excited about it. Stay tuned. There's way more server-side rendering awesomeness coming. So please let us know how you think this feature hydrates. <laughs> so quick shout outs. This work making hydration happen was a combined effort between Andrew Kushner, who's actually here, and and, uh, and Alan and myself. And it wouldn't have been possible without all of us. And yeah, you should make sure to come say hi to Andrew if you haven't. Um, he's an awesome, awesome, wonderful person that I get to work with all the time. Um, and if you want some hydration stickers so you can drip out your laptop, come find me. I still have a few left. And yeah, so what now, Mark? All right, let's just take a moment to be a little serious about this because this next step is really, really important. Go in the NG update, right? That's what you need to do. <laughs> NG update, go to version 16, get all this latest goodness in your apps, and then take advantage and not have any dry, thirsty components anymore. All right, so that, we did it. Yeah, yeah, so right, yeah. Live long and prosper, everyone. And go build great apps. But live long and prosper. But go build great apps. But live long and prosper. And build great apps. <laughs> <laughs>